Be prepared throughout for offensive language and sexual themes. Tonight, the president of the Big Brother house is honoured at her inauguration ball. Dear 2, it's 30 a.m. The celebrity housemates are waking up to their first morning in the Big Brother house where they're living under the rule of President Kirsty and Vice President Ryan. And President Kirsty is wasting no time getting down to some important business. Now look, I'm going to show you something secret. Now, if you ever need to go poo, <laughs> you spray this in the toilet. Okay. Like 12 times before. Okay. And this works. Mm -hmm. Can I smell this? Let me smell. Yes. But then this. Oh, wow. Then you could spritz this like after. Oh. But that. <laughs> like this. Oh. Exactly. Okay. In before. Oh, in, in the actual toilet. Before. Okay. okay. I'm with you. Gabby is talking to Big Brother about the less than ideal sleeping conditions. Trying to go to sleep was a bloody nightmare. Everyone was just. I think everyone had, like, had a couple of drinks and. <laughs> was just being so loud that I ended up telling everyone to shut up. I was like, listen, Ardeep, I know you're a comedian, but at night time, stop with the jokes. <laughs> I sleep with earplugs anyway, so I couldn't really hear what was being said, so maybe it was bloody stand-up comedy glow. But Dan's laugh is, like, he's... I mean, he's a big man, isn't he? He, like, comes from the belly and all you can... Like, the whole room vibrates. I was like, I'm going to kill you if you don't shut up. And then I said to him, I was like, how much do you want to bet that in the morning you're, like, you know, either still asleep or you, you're going to be tired tomorrow? And lo and behold, he's still in bed now. The president is still talking about toilet etiquette. How about this? This yeah. means it's occupied. you're in. Yeah. And then... Should I do that? Or there's something... Let's go. Does it go through, Kirsty? Can you slot it through? You can, but I don't want to slot it through because... Then you want to make sure it takes it off when someone's not yeah. in there. I've got an idea. That would be good. Yeah, yeah. No one's going to miss that. But is that in or out? That's someone's inside. OK, and then outside is here. Yeah, yeah. OK, in. The vice president's going to have to announce that. <laughs> Ten twenty-two a.m. Dan has come to the dairy room for his breakfast. Dan, as you know, last night you were chosen as the housemate to live on a liquidised green vegetable diet until further notice. <sighs> Big Brother is now providing you with your first liquid shake. Thank you very much. Feel free to enjoy it. <laughs> I'm not going to enjoy that one bit. And this <laughs> bacon and sausage is cooking in there right now. And I've got to take this in. I'm so hungry as well. I was literally just about to just have... Oh. Oh, my God, that's absolutely disgusting. Literally just tastes like a, like a horrible flower. Getting chose to do this is literally my worst nightmare. And I mean, I don't think Ryan did it viciously, but this, for me, like, I hate vegetables, and this tastes, this tastes worse than vegetables. Psychic Sally is receiving a message. Do, do you have a son? Yeah. Yeah, you'll have another boy. Will I? Yeah, there's another child going to okay. be born. OK, oi, oi! How do you know this, son? 
I just know it. Whoa, that's... Because yeah, it's just what I see around people. Oh, do you have that, like, thing? Oh, yeah. like, oh, I, you... Just like there, it's just there. I, I'm an immense... Skepti I, I'm an immense skeptic, Sally. Yeah, but well, you're a man of science. Anybody? Well, I'm that, not. I don't think I am. Well, you are. Number crunchers are because right. you know number cruncher. It it uh, math, has to be math, real. Yeah. Yeah, mathematics is there's definitely a science, yeah, yeah. and it's repetitive in that way. Yeah, yeah. So you you do come from a world of science. You know, I live in an esoteric world. That's what I live in. It, it's my life. It's has since I've been that high. Right. No, my wife is full on into it. And is she? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I'm not a fortune teller, but if I've got someone in front Can of me yeah. and I'm looking at a situation in their life, yeah. every situation in our life has a beginning, a middle and an end. So if the end is next week or next month or in six months' time... Well, then, Sally, you're going to win that. Big Brother 2018, then, girl. <laughs> yeah. Sure, let me know. Is it me? Because I'm right in front of you. Yeah, no, it won't be you. It won't be me? No. Girl, are you lying? No, I'm you not. You lying? No, you might be in the last three, but it won't be you. It's going to be a fella that wins it. <laughs> All right, it's going to be me, then. Yeah. Oi, oi. <laughs> we can get this show over real quick right now. Yeah. Sally's here. Yeah. Everybody stand in front of Sally. <laughs> I'll tell you who's going to win it. 11.32 a.m. The boys are encouraging Dan to eat his greens. Go again, man. Go again. Come on. Man, right feels... no, let's just try. You know, I reckon I'll throw up with my Dan all of it, though. No, just, just half. Get half. Just do half. Let's get half of it. And then you can take a good breather. Let's get half, half. Come on, go on, go, 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 Oh. Natalie and Kirsty are so discussing Kirstie American politics. Yeah. What do you think the president should do about the Flint water crisis? I mean, full guns are blazing and go in, and I don't know what the solution is, do you? They got to fix the pipes and get good water for the people. Where's this? In Michigan, where my husband's from. There's lead in the water and it's been even killing some of the kids. All oh, right, yeah. Well, they do, yeah, don't have fr fresh water. They don't have fresh water. But it's been now, declared an emergency, right? It's been, but they've just brushed it under Michigan. the table. But our president won't address it. Why they've brushed it under the table is because the city is 90% African Americans. Yeah, I know they have water stations and stuff, but isn't the solution to the situation to repipe and re? Yeah, that's the only solution. They have to okay. like go in and do the, do the pipes again. But it's like right, but no they're not meaning. doing that. They're not doing it. It's not happening. It has not been done. Well, as the president of the Big Brother house. Yeah, come on, Kirsty. Let me I'm hear. I'm going girl. to look into this as <laughs> soon as I'm back. <laughs> do you see what I mean, though? I it's do see like what that. you mean. And I know that it's not going to fix Did you the vote problem, for Trump? But it's like, Natalie. absolutely not. No, I did not. Well, I but, think that you know, that is something to look into. I'm also not the biggest politician in the world either. <laughs> so let's just not go there. <laughs> but, you know, no, I didn't. <laughs> Looks <so> good. <laughs> I don't Trump. Know. Be like, uh, I, I know, what do they people think of him here in London? Well, in the UK. He's very orange. Mm -hmm. OK. <laughs> he's very orange. Coming up, Rodrigo shows off. Hello. Holy. You look fantastic. I look ridiculous, don't I? Twelve forty-eight p.m. Last night, President Kirsty issued a climate change bill and told Ben that he could only take cold showers until further notice. Oh, okay, so go in, then take your knickers off. Right. It's still cold. <laughs> <laughs> it's still cold, right? Yeah, that's freezing. There you go. Okay, well, I'm gonna have a proper shower, Miss. I'll be right here. Okay. Oh. I'll be able to see you walk under there. <laughs> wow. 
just going to just put the soap on. <laughs> and then I'm going to go in first. <laughs> I'm going to... Oh. All right, you soaping up. Every nook and cranny. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Good job. Oh, bless you, Kirsten. <laughs> 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 okay, now get under that water. Yes, Stop yes. acting like a pussy. I'm Go going under. Rodrigo has been called to the diary room. Oh, hello. <laughs> oh, what is that? Hello, big brother. Uh, what's going on? Rodrigo, as you know, last night the president and vice president issued presidential orders and as part of the foreign trade deal, you were chosen as a housemate to swap suitcases with one from a foreign country. <laughs> yes, of course I was. Well, Rodrigo, big brother can now reveal that you have traded suitcases with Paolo a Brazilian citizen who is preparing for next year's Rio Carnival. Oh. Rodrigo, inside the suitcase and parcel, you will find your carnival outfit. Well, let's, let's try it on and see what it looks like. So, uh, what do you think of my outfit? Actually, Paula's outfit, which is mine now. Big Brother thinks you look absolutely fabulous. <laughs> Thank you. Well, um, are we having more coming in so all the other housemates can wear the same? It's just you. Oh. Rodrigo, are there any moves that you are going to do in this new outfit? So this is how you dance samba from inside and out. Big brother, if you look on my face, you see? It comes from inside and out, inside and out, inside and out. And then it speeds up. And then you gotta use your hands. And then you shake your ribs. And then you go. And this is how you dance. Rodrigo, you and I are free to leave the diary room. All right then, i see you later. But yeah, if you, um, you throw something in their food, they'll come up and their beards will all be orange or... Yeah. Where's Rodrigo gone? Hello. Holy. You look fantastic. I look ridiculous, don't I? <laughs> it's not very practical. Like, when I go through the door, I can't go like this straight. I have, like, to lean to the sides. And I have to be very, like, mindful of the fellow housemates to imagine, like... How am I going to oh, sleep in this? You look amazing, mate. You are to blame. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> There'll be your turn very soon. <laughs> when I have some authority in this house. <laughs> Aye, look. Hey, you look... <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Three forty-one p.m. Jermaine and Ben are feeling wheelie competitive. I'm assuming both of you had all the children you wanted. I've got crab. <laughs> this is. I've got crab. Yes, man down, man down. Oh, he's crashed first hurdle. Oh, that's it. Man down, Still, mate. You're man done. down. Okay, mate. Gucci's all right, yeah. Ah, oh, it's a bit tender. I'm not you gonna lie, pal. Tender as a goose. Bit, so, uh, yeah. Oh. Felt good. Rodrigo is talking about his image. I started having plastic surgery at the age of uh, 17. 17? Yeah, I'm 35 now. First were um, uh, the boobs. I developed something called gonomasty, which is the growth of the male chest tissue. Then at 19, I had a nose job, and then a lipo, then another nose job after six months, and that's how it started, and ever since... You got addicted? Not addicted. I visualised how I wanted to look, like... Mm. And 
because I wasn't happy with my appearance. You just wasn't happy with the way you looked? I wasn't happy with the way that I looked. I was very unhappy, actually, and I was fat. And I was very much bullied as well, like at school. Really? Yeah, in Brazil, boys would uh, physically bully me and abuse me because I wasn't like them. All the boys played football and they were all fit, and then I was like that. And they would call me potato nose because I had like a wild, thick nose. No. And I just couldn't live like that anymore. Is this like but, the final product? Yeah. Yeah. You're not having you it achieved it there, that's yeah. amazing. I don't want anything else. People can't read me because I don't have facial expression. So you never know if I'm sad, if I'm angry. Oh. When I'm happy, you know, because I smile naturally. <laughs> but otherwise, you can't read me. So I can come across just by looking at me as being someone who is stirred or too serious, or maybe a person without feelings, really. But the truth is that no, I have heart, I have feelings just like everyone else. Mm. Yeah. Four or seven p.m. Hardeep is making lunch. What's happening now? They're making a bit of meatball action with cozy zozies, isn't it? Do you hear me, do gangster? Do you? Man, them, man, them, see, yeah. Fuming out, sister, yeah. That looks so good. I like the way my balls move in the pan. <laughs> see what I did there? It's a joke, you see. Like sausage and balls. <laughs> you got it going on, sister girl. You got it going on. Dan is feeling peckish. Oh, what? Please don't smell the same. Oh, I can't drink that. It's making me feel sick. I would rather starve. Ben has come to talk to Big Brother. How are you getting on with the other housemates? Um, do you know what? Uh, I feel like I'm getting on um, with everyone. Do you know what I mean? Um, I've still not got round everyone, you know. I was thinking that about, um, and they, I was lying in bed with a geezer who's breathing on my neck, and I'm going, wonder what his story is. We got to have a little chat about the old, uh, the bed hogging and stuff, you know what I mean? Because I was literally right on the end. The thing what made me laugh is he chats, 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 bless him, and then he just goes... <laughs> and then he pulls all the quills off us like that, and I'm just going, oh, and when he trumped, and it, I felt it on my leg. Yes, I did get much sleep, bless him, but, um, yeah. I married a stranger, and now I'm sleeping with one. <laughs> How do you like them apples? Chloe wants to find out more about Hardeep. What's your eye of the storm? Oh, I just, I, um... I wasn't behaving as appropriately as I should have behaved. And someone got upset and complained about it. And the thing is, it doesn't really matter what I think. Mm. There's no point in me standing up and saying, oh, I've been wronged, I've been wronged. If somebody feels that way, you need to respect that. Because yeah. it's a big fucking deal. Do you know what I mean? Like you said, if a woman stands up and says, I didn't like the way that happened, it's a big deal for them to do that. So the worst thing you want to do is cut them down. How long ago was this? 10, 11 years ago, a long time ago, you know? Has it only just come no, out? No, no, it's been no... But, the, you know, it's... You know, if you're a woman in the business, you get one chance. If you're a man, if a man of colour in the business, you get one chance. So, you know, you're dropped from a height. And it's, you know, I mean, to be honest with you, I the storm, bringing up two kids on family credit and having got a food bank is I this fucking storm. <laughs> Coming up, the president gets tough. I don't really have anything of value or anything that I attribute too much value to with me in the house, mm. other than my wedding ring. Oh, I'll take it. Uh, it's about £5,000. But give it to me. Absolute <laughs> <laughs> yeah. savage. You could be living it up like a celebrity with a chance to win a massive £10,000 cash and a five-star luxury holiday for two people to the Maldives. Courtesy of Destinology, you'll spend seven nights platinum plus all-inclusive in a Sunset Junior Suite 
has the five-star atmosphere Kanafushi Maldives. Sophie, a chance to win £10,000 and a holiday of a lifetime. All you have to do is text CBB to 65555 or post your name and phone number to CBB. PO Box 7557 Derby DE1 0NP. Text costs £2 plus one message at standard network rate. Lines close on the date shown on screen and three working days later for postal entries. For rules and winners, go to channel5.com slash win. Good luck. Four forty-three p.m. Big Brother has called President Kirsty and Vice President Ryan to the diary room. Hello, Madam President. Hello, Vice President. How are you both? Good. Very well. Tonight there will be a grand inauguration ball to celebrate you and your presidency. Okay. And what does that entail? Madam President, as you can imagine, funding this ball does not come cheap. But you deserve the best. And so, unfortunately, it will mean that your housemates will have to suffer because of this. They're really going to hate us. <laughs> I, think, I think the President's going to come on the screen, don't you? Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. oh, yeah. Absolutely. And... <laughs> She's all dressed up, look. No way this is Big Brother. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please be upstanding for the president of the Big Brother House and the vice president. Hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> Come on, you're a bad girl. It's the Big Brother House, so I'm going to let it slide. <laughs> <laughs> Housemates, tonight there will be a grand celebration. A celebration of me. A celebration of my power and a celebration of this great house, the Big Brother House. It is with great pleasure that I offer you all an invitation to my grand inauguration ball tonight. Um, yes. I hope you can join me and my vice president. But of course, nothing in life comes for free. Oh. And that is where you, my people, will come into it. To fund this ball, I unfortunately have to charge you taxes. I ain't paid those in a long time, baby. You will raise the money by sacrificing your most beloved possessions. The more expensive the possession, the more money you will raise for the ball. <laughs> Shortly, you will each choose one item you want to give up. You will declare how much it is worth and put it in my tax collection box. Housemates, if you, Sounds about Trump. as a house, <laughs> manage to raise more than the tax needed, you will get to attend the most lavish, exclusive ball the Big Brother house has ever seen. I would also like to announce that I have chosen Roxanne to sing the American National Anthem at the ball. This is a very special opportunity for you, Roxanne. On behalf of myself and my vice president, we thank you for your cooperation and hope that you can all come together and make sure I get the night I deserve. Let's make the Big Brother house great again. Thank you. Do you think any housemates are going to be selfish? No. If they did, I'd be surprised and furious. And I would punish them within an inch of their damn lives. <laughs> I don't have anything worthy of giving. <laughs> You're getting far too into this. <laughs> power is power, dude. <laughs> I've got aftershaves, like £130. Oh, I've got my glasses that are like £400. See, Jermaine's a footballer, so he might have something really expensive. He might pull some out of the bag. I honestly don't want to pay my taxes, and I don't fuck with the President of the United States. I'm not giving him shit. Yeah. I feel like my hair is the only thing that's expensive. You're going to give him your... What the fuck? Trump is insane. What are you going to give? A toothpaste. <laughs> a mini one. A, a mini piece. A mini toothpaste. What are you giving? I will give this to Yeah, come on. Let's do it. That's what I'm talking about, baby. As Rodrigo does not have his suitcase, he is exempt from taxation. First to sacrifice a possession is Chloe. Chloe, Chloe, <laughs> Chloe, Chloe. Um, this item is sunglasses and it costs £1,000. Oh my god. Bloody hell, what if you sit on there? What's what make <laughs> you then? 
Very nice. Very nice. nice. Thank you. Do you know, I didn't make a £1,000 a month when I was our age. <laughs> I don't really have anything of value or anything that I attribute too much value to with me in the house mm -hmm. other than my wedding ring. Oh, okay. I'll take it. Uh, it's about £5,000. But give it to me. Absolute <laughs> <laughs> no. savage. No. Look at you. No. Thank you very much. So I'm going to sacrifice toothpaste. I feel that whatever I was going to give you would have been a bunch of bullshit out of your mouth towards a party because that's kind of how the president works. So, Gosh. mine is 25 oh, cent cool. toothpaste. You can add that on there, but you can have this open arms. You're fired. <laughs> 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 um, your Highness. Your um, Highness? Your Highness. <laughs> She's been elevated. I'll take it. Sorry, Princess Jasmine. <laughs> I'll take it. <laughs> the most valuable thing as a woman I will give you the pill, and it's this tampon. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> These people are wrong. Yes. You? Can we just get something straight? The whole idea is to earn as much money as possible for a good night. Just, just throw it out. A tampon and toothpaste. So far. Just going on over here. I want a party. <laughs> Jimin gave away his Christian Louboutin shoes worth a thousand pounds. Feeling now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm giving my suit and it was eight hundred pounds. I'm um, sacrificing my entrance shoes. What? Oh, yeah. Um, Welcome to the party, pal. Because I want a party yeah. and they're worth a grand and a half. This suit means a lot to me because um, it's got lots of pockets. <laughs> <laughs> Probably worth about two and a half grand. Oh, wow. Good. Here's my dancing shoes. OK. You know what I mean? And uh, these are a bag of sand. And monkey edge. You know what oh, I mean? Grand. OK. Last to give up one of her possessions is Sally. Oh, <laughs> take it away, Sam. Basically, this is a very sentimental jacket. It's worth £5,000. Oh! Wow. Yes! Wow. Wow. If the amount of taxes raised by the housemate is more than the amount in Vice President Ryan's tax envelope, housemates will win access to the President's ball. Look at his face! Look at his face! Oh, my God! Yeah! It 11 p.m. Housemates are getting dolled up for President Kirsty's inauguration oh, okay. ball. Turn the other way. Okay, no problem. Did you Turn know the other cheek. You know there's cameras. You're not bothered, yeah? What? There's cameras everywhere, but you're all right. I think I'm okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm hoping. <laughs> Have you seen my giant cock here as well? I mean, it is actually it's a giant cock. It's what? <laughs> it's a cock. What is it? It's a giant cock. Where? <laughs> oh, on the rug? No, it's on the table. <laughs> oh, my God. I have it. Roxanne is rehearsing for her big moment. When do I start? Is it straight in? Have I missed it? Oh, I've missed it. I think I've missed the intro. Now. Oh, say can you? This is really high, big brother. I'm so jealous that we're all going to be smartly dressed and I'm looking like a poo cock. And the rocket's red glare. This is going a different way. Happening to my voice. Still there. Is that her belting it out up there? Yeah, fucking too right she is, isn't she? Yeah. Oh, say does that star spangle band yet? That's terrible. Wave. She's 
proper belting it out as well, aren't she? Doesn't hold back. That tiny, tiny frame gives you that massive sound. Would uh, you like to hear it one more time? Oh, God, one more. Big Do this is awful. <sighs> Ten twenty-five p.m. Hardeep is sharing his first impressions of Rodrigo with Rodrigo. Okay. Do you know what, Rodrigo? Yesterday night, I thought, I thought I wasn't going to get on with you. Really? Yeah. But today, you've been Aww. such a fucking mensch. Oh. You've been a proper dude. Proper respect for you. Oh, thank you. But today, so, I haven't. Today, I haven't been myself. I've just been very, <laughs> not very quiet. No, but it's a version of yourself, yeah. Cos you hear me now, Rodrigo, yeah? I'm the truth, yeah? When I'm gone, the truth's gone with me, yeah? I think you judge people when they're under extremes of pressure. If one judges yeah. at all. Why did you think that you didn't get on well with me? Just, you know, that instinctive feeling you get from somebody, you know? Right, just because I look different? Or no, because no, I sound different? different? You couldn't look any more different than me. Well, let's just be clear about that. <laughs> yeah, but you know, last night it was heightened, wasn't it? Everyone had, you know, drink inside them. It was the, the release of getting in and all the rest of it. But don't focus on that bit. Focus on the bit where I'm saying you're fucking amazing. <laughs> oh, I think that you're amazing. No, stop. I said it first. It somehow seems more sincere. Ryan and Kirsty are talking about her career. What was your first ever gig? Star Trek II. Are you joking, yeah? Mm -mm. Wow. I have no idea what it's doing. And I acted like a freaking diva. So, like, what? Your first gig? Listen to this. Yeah, first. <laughs> How old were you? Not 30. <laughs> And I was supposed to go in for hair, test, makeup, and something else the next morning. And I went out, and I stayed out till like, 4 in the morning. And when I got out of this place, my car was impounded and locked up. So I called the studio, Paramount Studio, and it was like this. Hello, yes, uh, I'm calling. This is Kirstie Alley, and I'm calling. I'm uh, doing... Star Trek 2, and I just... Could you send a car for me, please? Okay, thank you. Yes, here's my address. Like, are you kidding? I had no... Weirdly, no back off. I mean, I would never why do that. Though? You must have thought... I wouldn't do it now. I wouldn't... That's what I'm saying, though. Why then? When you, Now you'd say you'd do it more because you've been in that position long enough to even give that shout. But why then, at 30 years old, your first big gig... Because that, somehow, that, in my mind... Have that bulgy mind, side of you to go... How in my mind, this is what movie stars do. They call up, they order cars... So you've, all, you've heard this and gone, all right, this is what everyone does. <laughs> Ten fifty three PM. It's time for the inauguration ball. Let me get the door for you, President. Thank you, darling. Do a clap. I'm not royal to me. <laughs> Fellow house guests. I wanted to tell you what an honor it is for me to represent you as your big brother president. And I will do my best to bring fairness, equality, and freedom to your lives. Also, please feel free to impeach me at your nearest convenience. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs>
Coming up, Roxanne slips up. No, no. Oh, you're falling. No! Oh. I didn't touch you. It's just her, not you. Twelve eleven a.m. Natalie is getting something off her chest. I got some problems. I got some serious problems. Like I'm mad. Kirsty and I have had a few conversations. I know she's a Republican. She says she's. She told me that. It's just a matter of time before everybody starts cracking. A storm is fucking coming. Everybody's sitting around here having fucking tea and crumpets and shit. If that's what y'all do in London, cool. But in the celebrity Big Brother house, this shit's about to be fucking lit. And I'm gonna tell you right now, it's going down. Kirsty and Hardeep are discussing American politics. You know, I'm more interested in, I guess you would say, the crime rate that's been chronically high in Chicago, Detroit, all these places for years. It's the, it's education. They're not being. Yeah, but then again, when you know LeBron sets up a school, he gets called a stupid man being interviewed by the stupidest man on television. That's how Trump reacts to him. Who cares? I think the news is myopic. This is what I think. The news is really? myopic. Yep. Anywhere I go, I do not see what the hell they're talking about now. I just don't. And I go a lot of places, and I have a lot of friends, and a lot of people who live in different states. But isn't that, isn't that in a sense, the, the point is that there is a, an unofficial apartheid in America, that if you're white and successful, you don't see poor it's, black but, America. But that's a lie. That's not true. So you, you don't see... So it's you that, do see poor black America. If you move in poor black America, you must hear stories of black, American, black Americans being vilified by the police. Yes. So but you also hear a balance of it that... And you know it, people in those neighborhoods, and you know that the crime rate is way higher than other places. So think what you want. It's just not my experience or my friend's experience, who live in Detroit, who live in Chicago, who What's live... their experience? That black people are criminals? No. Sorry, I'm... I'm just... No, their experience is that whatever their experience is... You know, a lot of my friends are black people, so they have a very differing view of what the, the atmosphere is like, you know, depending on what part of the town they live in, what sure. part, you know, what they do for but a I living. But I think this is the problem over here, we, as you say, I wouldn't say myopic, but we get, you know, we get news of the, the entire states. We don't have state television, so we yeah. don't understand the, the, the nuance and the fine detail yeah. of Chicago, Detroit, Minnesota, and how it's different. But see, that's a big mistake, because you, you get the big generality and you don't get the specifics. I know. What do you think is going to happen to America? Is it going to survive Trump? Of course. Really? We're America. <laughs> One thirteen a.m. The boys are being boisterous. <laughs> Nick has come to the diary room to talk to Big Brother. I love Hardeep. I think he's funny. As I mentioned last night, he's definitely my sort of humour, the sarcasm. Um, but he's fairly full on, and I, I think a few people are starting to starting to find a bit of difficulty with that. He's a very intelligent, educated person as well. I don't necessarily think there's any malice intended. It, it is just unrelenting. There's no off button. Some of the housemates have escorted the president to her quarters. Good night, my lovely. Good night. Have fun. Good night. <laughs> night, night. Are you falling? Yeah. Oh. I didn't touch you. 
What happened? I just heard, not you. It's um, okay, it's warm. Tell him, come on. Are you all right? Yeah. What the fuck? What? <laughs> what happened? You're right. Yeah. You didn't hit that fountain thing, did you? Oh, good, it's not even in there. Are you all right? Yeah, what happened? <laughs> Oh my god. Oh my god. How did you, you just I thought you jumped I'm so glad the fountain thing off. isn't there. Did you off? I thought you jumped in because you were just one twenty eight AM Housemates are talking about their sleeping arrangements. I feel worse. Whose bed is that over there? I like that location. At South. Sally's. Sally's. That's a nice location. Yeah, but she knew she was going to get that bed. <sighs> Her suitcase is already next to it. Tommy. Tommy was there. Tommy. Is there Tommy there? Is there Tommy? <laughs> no, Tommy's over on the left. Can you feel a Tommy? Is there a Tommy in the room? Is there a Bernadette? <laughs> Are you touching Kathleen Bernadette? Don't touch her with the dirty hand. <laughs> Wash your hands of the sausage meat before you touch <laughs> Kathleen. <laughs> Have you seen Xavier? Where's Xavier? I can't see. Z There's Xavier. I'm gonna, Xavier's I look. okay. Xavier the dog is fine. Fine. Hardy, I'm going to have to sp stick up for the Irish on this one, yeah? What are you saying, Mike? You've got to stop taking the piss out of them. I'm not. On the contrary. I'm joking. On the contrary. I'm joking. Natalie and Gabby are talking about Hardy. There's actually, obviously, I know that he's doing your wedding, but like, apart from that, I actually like. There's not one person that I'm not. I know. I don't Maybe. like. It's mad, isn't and it? And it's not even that I don't like him. I just no, think I that some things no, no, that no, he's no. saying are really offensive. And I also think that he's a little bit clinging on to Chloe. I've seen him just be a little touchy feely on her. I think that's the way he is. I don't know. He's he's like that. But I don't care if that's what he is. Then mm -hmm. then then I'm just not a really a fan of what you do mm -hmm. and what you say. And I don't think your jokes are funny at all. <laughs> I frankly, I don't even know what the fuck you're saying. <laughs> <laughs> so, I don't, I really just don't know. You know, Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I'm going to tell you what bothered me. When he told Rodrigo, I didn't think I was going to get along with you. I didn't get that comment. No, no, like... Rodrigo didn't get it either, and he's, um... What does that mean? Yeah, no, I know. At that point, I was a bit like, I was sat there and I was like, okay, this is a bit awkward. I don't really know. Mm. I don't want to be the person to like say something for Rodrigo or say something for somebody else. I'm going to say something for Natalie Nunn mm. and where what I stand for. Yeah. So he wasn't talking about no, like a certain person when he was talking about but Rodrigo. He thing. just said, I didn't think I was going to get along with you. So then Rodrigo, you say something and he sure the fuck did. Mm. He was like, what did you mean by that? Oh, good job for sticking up for mm. yourself. Cause I I'm the person, mm. and why America loves Natalie mm. is because I am going to say what the people which, are thinking at is, home, yeah, which amazing. is what I really believe in. Like, I don't, I look, look, this is how <laughs> I work. I'll give you a pass when you explain to me something that I felt offended by. That's when I'll be like, okay, I get it, cool, that's how, you, that's what it is, and da 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 da. But just know I don't fuck with you. That's how I'll be. I'm yeah. very blunt about it. Just really straightforward. Like, mm -hmm. not in a bad way. Doesn't mean you need to, like, oh, my God, Natalie's going to just be psycho crazy. Absolutely not. <laughs> like, that's not me. It's, you know what I mean? It's when I'm like, um, I was offended by that. Can you explain to me? And then you explain it. And then I'm like, nah, you still don't get a pass. Tomorrow night. As your president... I take the security of the Big Brother house and protecting its borders from the outside world very seriously. It is my presidential order that we build a wall. Fuck you. A no. great, great this wall. Is so the oh greatest wall the world has ever seen. No, they have the lyrics. They just wanted a better life. Dr. Dre certainly got one. Channel 5's network premiere tells the story of the kids straight out of Compton tomorrow night at 10. Next, best of bad TV, and it's not just bad, it's the most shocking ever. Stay right where you are.